What's up, folks? We got a little Q&A today, and we got a very popular question. The question is, what the heck do I do with my escrow accounts? So well, what's your version of that question? Moreover, what I currently don't have it uh, and worked into my mortgage, and so then I get this bill at the end. And so I was just wondering. It's a super fun bill to yeah, get, it's by the big. way. It's like, hey, Merry Christmas. Yeah. A ton of money comes yes. to us. And so how, like, it, is it more wise to integrate it into the mortgage and be done with the bill or figure out how to save. All right. First, let me introduce you to the wonderful Courtney, who is now, as of just hours ago, our media marketing director on our team. So you may you may get to see more of her in the future. Scary. If not, you may get to see more of me because of her in the future. But let's answer this question. Let's break it down real quick. If you were to escrow, which means a lot of things, but in this scenario, it means to include your full P-I-T-I payment, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Into- oh, th- it includes like my school taxes, my property taxes. This is exactly why I I wanted to, I want it to be tended to. Yes. Ten- oh, that's like an of mice and men reference. When you say tended to, I hear, I can still tend to the rabbits, George. But anyway. Oh. Poor okay, guy. here we go. Lenny was a good I man. Know, yes. Here's the deal. Principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. You are always, always, always going to have to pay your principal and interest to your mortgage company if you still owe anything on your mortgage, right? Taxes and insurance can be required to be escrowed if that's part of your qualifying for the loan. Um, or it can be not required. Third option, it could be required and then later once the amount you owe comes down below 80% or sometimes 79.5%, they take away the insurance. They can allow you, if you request, to no longer have them require it and you can handle that on your own. So you pay your insurance company your insurance bill every year or maybe every six months or whatever. It could be monthly. And then you pay your annual tax bill one time when that tax bill comes. And that would include school and state and all that stuff. All all of the property related taxes. What is this insurance called? Homeowner's insurance. Homeowners. Yep. Okay. Now you might have other insurance, but if you have a mortgage, the bank or whoever the lender is, is going to require that that collateral, the house, that's what they'll take if you don't pay, that it's insured. Now, you know, hurricane in Florida could just be a hailstorm in Texas, could be tornado, could be water damage, could be a pipe burst, could be a fire, any of that stuff. They're saying, if that happens, we still need to be protected. So you have to have insurance. If your home is completely paid for, you don't technically have to have that. It would be, in my opinion, professional opinion, completely nuts not to have it at all, unless you're independently wealthy and you just self-insure. But that aside, what you're asking is, I think, should I have the bank handle the taxes and insurance part? And what I'm hearing you say is you kind of want them to because then you don't have to. Correct. Okay. Like it feels automated. Right. So what I'm telling you is I appreciate that it's nicer to have them do it than you do it. But from a financial perspective, mathematically, I think you're better off holding on to that money all year and paying them yourself. Now, what I would recommend and often recommend on our radio show or to our clients here at the Tajamani Home Selling Team, automate it yourself. So you don't have to think about it. Go into your bank account and just say, hey, they, the, the mortgage servicing company would be taking $331.19 a month for my taxes and insurance or whatever that amount is. And then just go into your online banking and say, automatically, pull this amount and put it over here in this other account. Or if you use a budgeting software, go into your budgeting software and say every single month, this amount goes over and it's not moving out of my account. It's just going into this bucket. Now, if you need to get it out of your account so you don't spend it, then move it into another account, make that account hard to get to, do it at another bank, you know, make, require it to take a day or two to get to it so you don't spend it because you shouldn't be spending it. But you may want to earn the interest on that. You might want to put it in a slightly higher interest-bearing savings account where there's no money coming in and out. You're not writing checks. At the recording of this video, there's very little interest to be earned, but it is creeping up a little bit. Even if you could just earn $100 in insurance, I mean, in interest, I'd rather you earn that than the bank. The other thing is the bank, 
is really um, rigid in the way it, 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 it um, saves, the way it pulls. So it's going to base the amount it takes this year based on last year's tax amount. And this year's tax amount will change. It usually goes up, but it could go down. And so they might still at the end of the year ask you for some catch up money or credit you back. They took more than they needed. They're not taking it. They asked for more than they needed. I would rather you manage that yourself, earn a little bit of interest, have the financial flexibility to work with your own funds, but still be totally prepared when that bill comes, even if you go protest your taxes, to have the money in your account so when the bill comes, it's never fun, but you're like, I, got, I have it, I saved it, I'm fine. It will also kind of force you a little bit to be a little bit more careful in pricing out your insurance and being careful with whether you're being taxed at the right amount. When it's automated, it's sort of out of sight, out of mind, and you're not as diligent with it. But we're not talking about blood, sweat, and tears type of labor. We're saying asking your insurance person to price that out, maybe hiring someone to protest your taxes or looking at it yourself, getting a professional value opinion from an agent you trust and being and protecting yourself. But all in all, you're just automating to set that money aside yourself, earn your own interest. And in an emergency scenario, being able to use that money instead of it being out of reach. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that that was the wise choice and not so there are people out there that would say it, the wise choice is just to let them do it. But mm -hmm. what they're trying to do is protect you from a lack of discipline. Yeah. And look, for some people, you might have a tra track record of just not stewarding those financial resources well. And then that it's fine. It's not a horrible thing, but it's fine because you're it's gone and you can't access it anymore. If you're even remotely disciplined with your funds, it's just better for you to earn that interest, have control, and have a, just enough of a burden to price those things out every year and, and be a better steward of those resources. So my recommendation would be you do that. If you do go the other route, that's fine. But then now what you're managing is you're trying to give yourself the diligence to still shop that insurance, make sure you're taxed accurately, mm -hmm. and keep an eye on that escrow amount that they're not over pulling every month or under pulling and you're going to be surprised at the end of the year that you still owe more. Is that helpful? Completely. Thank and you. Any other escrow questions? No, I don't think so. All right, folks. Hope that was helpful for you. We get this question all the time. If it's required, it's because the bank wants to feel a little bit more secure that you're going to pay for those things. If it's not required, maybe you still want to do it. Probably not. If you have other questions, let us know in the comments. We read every single one. We'll, we'll respond to you there. Or if you're ready to make a move real estate-wise, our information's below. We can take that offline. We'll take good care of you. We'll see you on the next video.